Okay, so we're going to assemble the uh, CX20. Um, you've got this bit uh, that's part of the antenna or the GPS uh, on the CX20. So if you try and put it down on anything, that's the bit that's resting first. And then any pressure you put is at an angle. So I just found an old box. Um, it just happens to be a polystyrene box. And I thought this might be a, a better way of doing it and then I can work on it and it's not going to damage. It's way too big for, for what I actually need, but uh, it'll do the job. So that's, uh, that's the main thing. I should put that around that way. And hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better as I assemble it all up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to put on is uh, the Wakira uh, G2D uh, little mounting plate. But it does fit those holes, which is rather good. Um, just back into there, so that's fine. The only thing I did have to do was drill these a little bit deeper with uh, a flat bottom drill. Um, you might be able to see that in there, but uh, no bother if you can't. Uh, just a little tiny bit, because the screws that actually come with the quad are, are quite small, and uh, I just wanted to make sure there was two or three, or it's probably three or four threads that are actually going into these little holes. I've put a little bit of uh, thread lock into just an old cap there just so I can just dip the end in uh, just going to lock them in on this just to make sure they're nice and secure the actual kit that comes with the uh, CX20 look pretty good uh, the instructions were very good uh, been through those are just in English um, which is good for me um, they're, and they're yeah, pretty comprehensive actually I was quite impressed with them so uh, I read those while the battery was charging. I, haven't, I didn't actually spot the disc in there, but I've got a disc in there that I shall pop into the computer, have a look, see what that's all about. And then the last two things in there are the screws which actually hold the uh, landing skids on or landing gear on. Uh, and then you've actually got the uh, a spanner and like a multi-screwdriver. There, so let's pop there we go. So spanners for the the props on and then these are quite handy and it's just a little multi-purpose tool so you just pop it in there oh it's quite stiff actually oh there we go so then that's going to be quite rigid oh not bad little toolkit to carry around so it's going to pop a bit of thread lock on it's not gonna it's a tiny little screw so just the tiniest little amount uh, but I think it just just make me feel a little bit more confident when it's whizzing around it's definitely got a grip there like I said I did it so I got I think it was three or four threads down at least so that was uh, I think that's more than enough it's done up nice and tight Uh, that is going nowhere. Okay, so that's just going to fit into there. Nice and simple. Just slide on the locks in position, basically. Uh, next thing, while it's upside down or inverted, is to pop the landing skids on. That's quite simple. And just literally use these screws. Oh, these five screws here. Um, I don't know what the fifth one's for, but perhaps I'll come across it anyway. Uh, as far as I knew, there was only four, so it's a, perhaps it's a, a bonus. I'd rather have had an extra battery as a bonus, but never mind. And there we go, that's nice and tight. Now, the other one, as you can probably see, you've got the... Uh, these all, all to do with the antenna and the... I don't know if it is the GPS, but certainly our antennas uh, certainly got a fair bit to do with here. And um, these have to be fitted and then run around here, um, but they don't actually clip in or anything. Now, what I've seen is people put cable ties and everything on. I'm actually going to make this fit one of my cases, so I'm going to need to take these off. It's way too high to fit in, so I'm going to need to take them off and lay them down to put them in a case. So what I'm going to do is take this apart and then put an elastic band or a grommet on there and then I can just slide them on and off but that will still hold them in position. Now 
There we go. What I've actually found is um, I bought some uh, grommets or uh, O-rings the other day that I needed for the hose lock system for the um, tap outside. Um, other other systems are locking are, are available. And the, uh, uh, basically it was cheaper to buy 20 than it was one uh, in the post off eBay. So I think these are gonna work quite well because they're quite tight um, to get on here, I think. I haven't actually had a go with this, but uh, they looked as though they'd be all right. Yeah, there we go. It's gonna go in its own good time, of course. Do you know if I didn't video this, this would have gone on straight away. There we go, and that's actually, yeah, perfect. So I can then slide these underneath. I've probably got this around the wrong way. Nope, there we go. So that could slide underneath there, or I could just lay it down. So it's gonna lay across there like that, and then just slide that up. And that's gonna keep it in one position there. Yeah, it works pretty well. It slides really easily, so that's good. So. I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Okay. Let's make sure the cables go through those little, there's a couple of little slots that they have to go through. they're not caught anyway. That's fine. My theory with these, which I'm hoping won't let me down, is just to slide those over there. That's good. If I didn't find that works, I could just add another couple if we needed to. And that's that. Pop it over. Props on here are clearly marked. Um, there's a rotation um, arrow here, and here obviously uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. And also the nuts uh, go clockwise and counterclockwise. So that's an ordinary clockwise or right-handed thread. And then this one will be, so when I go that way, it undoes it. And when I go that way, it does it up. So it's a left-handed or counterclockwise thread. So I'm just gonna pop the prop on, making sure we've got the rotation right. So that's going that way, as it clearly shows here. So that's a normal one. Got about a tiny bit of thread lock on here, just a little tiny drop. I've just read a few things about, a few horrors about what has happened to them, so uh, I'm sure they'd be fine generally. Most people don't seem to, but that's why I've put just a little bit, just gives you that little bit of confidence. I did actually just lift that back off and put it down again. Just a tiny bit of burr of plastic had just caught so um i've just just basically reseated it so it is down fully onto the aluminium now and this is the clockwise one and it's not going anywhere the other thing i've noticed is actually on the props i don't expect you'll be able to pick this up it really is white on white uh, but Basically, there's an arrow on the prop as well, so if you couldn't work out that was the leading edge, it actually tells you as well, so that's rather good. So this one is the left-hand thread. The threads go clockwise and counterclockwise, obviously as the prop's turning, it's actually gonna try and tighten the nut up, so that's why on this particular quad, that's why they've done it that way. Okay, firstly, sorry for going back on the floor, but it's the only way I can get the height to get this thing in. Just to give you an idea of its physical size, because I've not seen one until it actually turned out, and I should have read all the specs, I'm sure it tells you that. Um, it's exactly the same size as the tarantula. Um, obviously, the body's much bigger on the CX-20, and when you're looking at it that way, hopefully you can see it's a hell of a difference as well. Um, 
there's something about the presence of this thing actually. It is more, I don't know, it just seems to have more presence in it. Um, the build, of, you know, the way that the motors are and everything else just seems a bit more of a uprated quad. Obviously, it's what two, uh, nearly four times uh, dearer than the Tarantula, so I'm, I'm hoping for a lot of performance or a, a lot of uh, features that I, I managed to get out of the uh, Tarantula. Um, I don't tend to use the skids and everything, as you know. So, but with this, I'm actually going to use this. Um, uh, like this and then with the with the gimbal and the camera. I really want it as a camera base That's what I'm really after uh, fun flying. I still think this one's gonna take some beating It's an awesome piece of kit and the Dromedo Ominous as well. I really like that one um, as with my other quads really so um, Now the main difference I was going to show you was the weight So let me grab my scales and then I'll, I'll show you the difference in weight is phenomenal Okay, so I've got my scales there I've got it in grams and there's a tarantula. Tarantula's not carrying the ordinary uh, landing gear that comes with it. Um, I broke them pretty early on. And even the landing skids uh, and the prop guards uh, I've taken off. I, I tend to hand launch and hand catch. Um, just the way I fly, really. There we go. So we got 190 on that. And then CX20. Just pop that down. Oops. Uh, so that's 692, so 190, if we took that up to sort of 220, say with all the other bits to sort of balance this out, it's still three times more, three, yeah, way over three times more uh, the weight. Uh, and that's allowing for the extra landing gear that's on this one sort of thing. Uh, I will be running this more like this. Um, purely because I think I'm going to have this as a, as a camera base. Uh, this is what I want it for. Uh, I'm going to be using this for that. And then this one's just um, just sheer, uh, sheer fun, actually. Okay, the other thing I bought, and I got these from uh, Banggood, um, was the actual prop guards for this. Um, they were about three or four pounds, which is amazing for the four of them, because uh, they're absolutely massive. You almost sort of, well, just look at those and stick them on there. They take up twice the size of the quad. They're never going to fit in, no matter what sort of custom case I make, that's not going to fit. And um, I'm, yeah, I don't know, I don't use prop guards or anything else I fly. Uh, I haven't done on the tarantula since I bought it, so um, I don't know. I'm still a little on an hour and um, I might go out and just see, see how I feel when I'm outside with it. But there's an interesting thing with it. Um, you obviously mount them like that. And then there's holes here, and then they give you a little bag of string. So you're obviously designed to loop those up, and whether that loops all the way around, I don't know. Uh, but that seems a weird system to me. Uh, not, not come across that before, not seen anything else on the web about it either. But uh, they certainly seem, you know, for what they are, I mean, they really are going to do a good job. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of prop guards. So it's a personal choice. So. Uh, you pay your money, you take your choice.